If you're sitting at the computer ready to write but you don't know where to start, well, today I have 10 ways you can begin the writing process when you're staring at a blank screen. I'm Ann Croker, writing coach. If you're tuning in for the first time, welcome. If you're a regular, welcome back. I'm sharing my best tips and training skills and strategies to coach writers to improve their craft, pursue publishing, and achieve their writing goals. This is episode 241, 10 ways to start the writing process when you're staring at a blank page. Louis L'Amour is attributed as saying, start writing no matter what. The water does not flow until the faucet is turned on. Sounds easy enough, but a lot of times we can't even find the faucet, or we'll find the faucet, but we fail to turn it on. Either way, we want to write, but no words flow. Is that you? Are you ready to begin writing, but you just don't know where to start? You don't know how to get the words to flow? Well, I've got 10 options for you today, 10 faucets, if you will, and I'll bet one stands out more than the rest. If so, try it. See if you can get those words flowing. Number one, start with a memory. Think back to an event that seems small but is packed with emotion. Now, you don't have to fully understand it all, so just remember it. Something changed due to that event, and the change may have been subtle or seismic, but you emerged from it a different person. The simple prompt, I remember, can get you started. And you could use it as a journal entry and just kind of see where it takes you. Or you could go ahead and start writing for something that becomes more prominent. Remember these scenes from the past. You'll learn from them. I experienced this when I wrote a short scene in this style. I called it One Lone Duck Egg. And I'll link to this and other resources in the show notes, which you'll be able to get to at annkroger.com slash ep241. Okay, number two is photos. Photos can transport us back to another time and another place as recently as a week ago or as long ago as childhood. So pull a photo from your collection of family photos, whether it's a physical photo or a digital photo, and then write in response to that scene. Recreate it or draw from the memories that are there. Or maybe you're in the photo, maybe you're not. Write from that. Remember what you felt like when you were there or wonder why you're not in the scene in the first place. Maybe you could elaborate on a particular person who's in the scene. What do you think was happening in that moment? And what does that photo say to you today? Another approach would be to combine words with images to create a photo essay. Back in 2011, I walked around the farm where I grew up and I snapped several photos. And each time, a flash of a thought would come to mind, a flash of a memory. When I got home, I pieced it together to create something I called dancing in the loft. Number three, start with art. Art ignites the imagination. Whether you invent a story behind the piece of art that you choose or you document your response to the art, either way, you're going to end up with an interesting project. One of my creative writing professors in college gave us a similar assignment. It was to write poetry from art. Now, it's possible she was trying to introduce us to ekphrastic poetry, which, according to the Lantern Review blog, is, quote, written in conversation with a work or works of visual art, end quote. But she took a less formal approach. She just asked us to find some art, study it carefully, and write a poem. So I used this small framed print that I had of an Andrew Wyeth painting. That was my inspiration. So I studied the boy. He was sitting in some grass. And I imagined a possible scenario that would have led up to that moment that Wyeth captured. And then as I was finishing the poem and typing it up, I realized, oh, I need the information about Andrew Wyeth's work. So I turned the frame around and fortunately back on the back side, I could see the year that it was painted and the name and the name of the painting was Far Away and I had coincidentally named mine Runaway. So choose some art, see where it leads. Number four, choose an object. I wrote about an old worn knob that topped the post at the bottom of our stairs I loved that worn knob for being worn. All the stain was rubbed off from years of hands running around it. And then, of course, we rubbed it even more when we were going up and down the stairs ourselves. We would just swoosh around the newel post. And so eventually it rubbed down to the natural wood color. Well, we decided to replace the railing at some point. And the carpenter was a friend of mine, too. And I begged him to save the knob. And then I wrote about it. I also wrote about a time when I played with a precious soapstone vase. It was a family heirloom, 
and the consequences of that lasted a long time. I'll pop that in the show notes as well. My friend and co-author Charity Singleton Craig uses objects and sometimes places to launch what she calls a chain of remembrance. She explains, quote, I start with something specific, a year, a place, an object. Then I try to remember just one specific thing about it. After that, I try to remember another thing and another after that, allowing each memory to flow from the one before. And eventually I have a whole chain of memories, often growing stronger and more specific as I go, end quote. Now, you could have a story that stands alone or like charity, link it so you get this complex chain of connections. Number five, start with a question. Scott Russell Sanders says, I begin an essay with a willingness to be changed by what I write. I do not set out to deliver something I already know, but to inquire into the unknown, to dive into confusion in search of greater clarity, end quote. To inquire into the unknown is to start with curiosity or with a question. Now, your questions could be personal questions, cultural questions, specific questions, maybe big life questions. To get you thinking, here are some of Scott's questions, which he shares in his book, The Way of Imagination. Why did my father drink, and how did his drinking affect me? How have the landscape and culture of the Midwest shaped the people who live there? Why is racism so persistent? What is beauty? What is wildness? What is so mesmerizing about rivers? Scott writes with the same sense of inquiry as Danny Shapiro, who says, quote, I write in order to discover what I don't yet know, end quote. What questions rise up in you? Use those to launch your next writing project. Number six, start with another piece of writing. Have you read something recently that really resonated with you, something you wanted to discuss with someone? I mean, maybe you ran across an article you connected with that put words to your thoughts, Maybe you read a book that you disagreed with. Maybe a blog post held some information that you had never heard of before. In any of these scenarios, you could start with the writing that stirred that something up in you and then refer to it, react to it, respond to it, riff on it. The world of online writing has just expanded this whole sphere of discussion and debate so anyone with a digital device can find a way to publish their point of view. Now, this could be you. Start with rereading something, an existing piece of writing, and then type your own thoughts as a response. Then you can kind of weave together a select quote from the original with your own thoughts along with other perspectives. This is how we enter the conversation and add our angle and deepen the discussion. Number seven, start with the news. I first heard about newsjacking from TJ Mercer. She's the founder and chief noisemaker, as she calls herself, of Media Mavericks. I've since learned that it's a marketing technique. And the idea is to monitor the news and then look for news, breaking news, that is connected to your own personal brand. So let's say you write about health and wellness. Well, any new study that comes out, you could respond to it with your own angle. Maybe you have something going on in your life that's similar to a high-profile person. Or if you care about the environment, any number of breaking news items could be something you write about and connect to, like a wildfire or another animal added to the endangered species list. So monitor the news, make a connection to what's being said about the event or announced, and then bring your own slant, your own story, your own perspective, your own opinion. Number eight, start with the culture. Now, you could argue that a cultural event is really kind of like a news event, but I feel like by separating them, we might come up with a few new ideas, like thinking about a TV show or an episode of a TV show or a movie. On a group coaching call in Your Platform Matters, YPM, it's my membership program, we were talking about this concept, and after describing newsjacking, I coined a term I call culture lassoing, <laughs> and that's because of Ted Lasso. That show has so many different threads that you could engage with. In fact, I've seen on Twitter people talking about mental illness because of a few things happening in this season of Ted Lasso. So you could use a pop culture phenomenon like that, lasso it, and then create a conversation around it. Fans are going to notice because you've referenced the show that they love or the music they love, and then they're going to enter the comments to weigh in. Another example is when The Good Doctor came out, authors who write about autism were able to write or speak about the accuracy of the main character's portrayal 
of a surgeon who is on the spectrum. You can look at music and movies, social media shifts and gaming trends, identify what you've discovered and have something to say about it, then share that with the world. Because you've lassoed something with name recognition, you may interact with a whole new set of people that you never would have met otherwise. Number nine, start with conflict. <laughs> when you see two product options, let's say, or two wildly different opinions on something, take a stand, make a claim, explore it, and support it. You could write a this versus that piece, like Trello versus Notion, or front-loading versus top-loading washers, or Yellowstone versus Yosemite National Park. Or you could provide a balanced view to something that's been presented as an either-or. Or you could start with a public claim that somebody made and then support it if you agree with it or disagree with it. I know this can feel risky in a time when positions on various issues seem more volatile than ever, but you could take a milder approach and it can be just as interesting. Number 10, start with a list. Your brain can hardly stop from adding items to a list. So if you're stuck, you may find you're unstuck by the time you scribble your fourth or fifth entry. And then you might as well keep going. And next thing you know, you have written the draft or at least the outline of any number of things, a poem, an essay, short story, blog post. While a list can store ideas and fuel longer projects, occasionally a list can actually become the project itself. Like Oh, I don't know, maybe 10 ways to start the writing process when you're staring at a blank page. <laughs> yeah, I did that right here. James Altucher has written and spoken about how he is an idea machine, and this comes mostly through making lists. He recommends keeping 10 as the minimum number of things on that list, and then uses that as a way to explore all kinds of things. Let's just say you're writing a book about trust, and maybe you're flipping the standard idea of trust to kind of redefining it. Maybe you're claiming that distrust is actually a good thing. So you could start making some lists related to the book, like 10 beliefs people have about trust, 10 quotes about trust, examples of trust with the new definition, 10 cautionary tales of people who don't step into this new way of viewing trust, or 10 ways people exhibit healthy trust. And you could build out your book's content with a series of lists. And it, uh, you could use this for any kind of writing, of course, like a poem or an essay. So don't hesitate to use lists. Speaking of lists, let's go through this one more time. You can start with a memory, a photo, art, an object, a question, another piece of writing, start with the news, culture, conflict, or a list. Like I said at the beginning, one of these ideas is going to stand out a little more than the others, and I suggest you try that. And then bookmark this for the future. And next time you're stuck and the words won't flow, you'll have options for how to start the writing process when you're staring at a blank page. As I mentioned earlier, you can check out all kinds of links and resources for this episode at anncroker.com ep241. I've also gathered together all the ways we could work together. All the opportunities, both free and paid, they're all on one page, annkroker.com slash everything. Feel free to check that out. I'm Ann Croker. Thank you for listening. <laughs>